Hey everyone, today we're going to replace a toilet and I'm just going to walk you through the steps uh, as I go. First step of course is going to be to shut off the water. You'll have a valve down here usually to the lower left of the toilet. This is a quarter turn valve. So you may have one that requires multiple turns to shut it off. So shut off the water first, flush the toilet just to get as much of the water out as possible. Next step is remove the hardware. It uh, just makes it easier for you to get in and around things. Just take the lid off. You can take off the flush handle if you want. And then pop off if you have caps and loosen the screws for the seats. Underneath, uh, you'll have some kind of a nut that goes down underneath that you can screw out. And then once these are loose, you can pop the seat off. Okay, now with all that off, Next step is to get as much of the water out as possible. Uh, put on a pair of gloves, get yourself a bucket, uh, some rags and towels, and start soaking up the water, both from the bowl, but also from inside the tank. Because uh, we're going to need this pretty dry to take this tank off. I'm going to take off the water line to the toilet. You can do this with an adjustable wrench at the bottom fitting. Make sure you have a towel or rag here underneath to catch water because this line is still filled with water and it is going to drain out. Uh, and you can take this here and just kind of slowly start to turn it counterclockwise until it loosens. And then now up underneath you'll have another type of fitting here which you can take off by hand. Just loosen this. And there's the water coming out the bottom. Okay, set that down. Um, I would not reuse that. Get a new line. Make sure that your valve is in good shape too. If it's not, now's a good time to consider replacing that also. A reason for replacing those lines, here's a new one, is if you see in here you have a rubber gasket on both ends. And that rubber uh, can get compressed too much um, or just wear out over time. And so it's better to have uh, fresh seals and gaskets for these connections. Next step here, I guess is optional, depends on if you're doing this yourself or with someone else, uh, is whether you want to take off the two screws and bolts on the bottom to separate the tank fill from the bowl, just to make it easy to get it out. Uh, I will take off this top tank just to make it easier to move and maneuver in the bathroom. Getting this off can be a bit tricky. You'll see here you've got your bolt on the bottom, but it's often recessed, and you probably have a corroded flat blade screw attachment on the inside of the tank. So best to grip this with a robo grip or an adjustable wrench to loosen it. If you need to, you can put a little bit of liquid wrench on there to loosen any rusted parts. Okay, now once you've taken those bolts off, you can take the top tank, lift it up, and it should come right straight up, and you can just set it forward on the bowl. And then take that out of the room, and take a utility knife or razor or knife, and you're going to want to score this caulk to break it. Uh, break the seal so that you can get the toilet off. And we're also going to pop off the caps and loosen the T-bolts that anchor it uh, down to the drain underneath the floor. Just take this cap off and pop it off with a screwdriver and then uh, you can loosen here these plastic bolts again with an adjustable wrench and there should be a washer here too and you can pop that off as well. well. Do that on both sides. At this point now with the bolts off, we're going to try to rock the toilet side to side gently. We don't want to crack the tile underneath, but we want to basically break that wax seal on the floor to get ready to lift it out. With that loose now, now is your time to make sure you can get out any remaining water and then get yourself a tarp or a towel or something ready. So when you lift the toilet up, you have a spot to put it, and you don't ruin your floor. Put 
Looks like the old toilet had some shims in place. Maybe the floor wasn't exactly level. All right, to take off the old wax seal, just use a uh, paint scraper or multi-type of tool uh, with some gloves. Scrape off the old wax. So now I'm just gonna take a razor blade, as you can see here, and I'm just scraping off the extra caulk. Now to get off any remaining residue, you can take some goof off or other solvent-based cleaner if you have a uh, tile. And as long as you know that it's not gonna stain an area that might show, depending on the footprint of your new toilet, and clean off some more. Here's the wax ring that I just bought at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get it at any hardware store. Uh, it comes with the new T-bolts, which I think is good. You wouldn't want to reuse the old ones. Um, and so we're gonna lay this around the bottom ring of the toilet. Uh, some people just set it right on the drain. Um, just using a new color toilet and they want us to put the T-bolts uh, on here first then press the wax ring against the hole in the bottom of the toilet then you align it up over the T-bolts so I'm going to stick with this and put the wax ring here and then line it up and we'll see how it works okay the T-bolts are in place here this other one stays on the floor better, so that's the real height. So we put the wax ring with the reinforcement around the opening on the bottom of the bowl. Uh, that's consistent with the instructions for the wax ring itself and also for the toilet. So this is now pressed in just enough that it's going to stick. And we're going to go flip this over and rest it over the drain opening and put the T-bolts through these two holes. Okay, so we set the toilet down after lining it up on the T-bolts, just like that. And you have to sit down or press with your weight on the bowl to make sure that that wax seal gets compressed. And then that the toilet is level and flush on the floor. Um, now, it's not exactly level left to right. And I noticed that the tile here is just a little uneven, so you can listen, it'll rock a little bit. So what I'm going to do, but because this one doesn't really have a lot of space to have shims placed in, I grabbed some real tiny pieces of wood to use as shims, and even some old plastic collar stays. And so I'm just going to put some of these underneath, uh, just enough to take that, that shaking off before I set everything down and caulk that interface here with the floor. Now you can see where this is separated from the floor and test where you might need a shim by just running one of these collar stays underneath. And you can see here we've lifted it a little bit underneath and then once we caulk that it'll be hidden from view. But now it's not shimmying at all. So with that now level and set we can put the nuts on the t-bolt the nuts they come with first the plastic sleeve to be in touch with the ceramic or the porcelain then the washer and then the nut before i put that on i'm going to take care of getting that extra wax pulled up and off around the t-bolt okay. now if for some reason your t-bolt moves or rotates as you're putting on the nut and you want to make sure that it's still in place the right way you should be able to clear out enough of the wax in here that you can see which way the t-bolt head is pointed so you know that it's locked in place underneath the top of that drain and you're in good shape and then you can put the washer and the nut back on okay we'll do the other side before we run this one all the way down just in case there's a minor adjustment and then we'll avoid over tightening these because you don't want to break the porcelain okay so once you have that tightened down we're not going to have the, any rocking and that bowl is is firmly in place now before we can get the caps on obviously the bolts too tall so you have to use a hacksaw cut it off um, 
to the tube right here. And we'll just cut it off maybe right about there. And I'm gonna put an old rag around the back here so you don't bang the hacksaw into the porcelain. All right, so there's the bolt taken off and I got tired of the hacksaw. I didn't like it, it was sticking. I was afraid it was gonna hit the porcelain, so I switched up and I used a Dremel multi-tool uh, with a vacuum here to catch the dust and a rag to catch this. I just took this off. Much quicker plastic cap that they gave you with the toilet. And you just snap it in place here. So we put the tank on the top for this particular toilet. They give you several bolts and you're going to line these three holes here on top with the three holes there. Put the washer underneath, then the nut, and not over tight. When you first get those bolts started, it's going to seem a little weird because the tank is sitting on a rubber mat. And so, as you tighten them down, this will level out. After the bolts are tightened, you should have the top level. And you can still see that the rubber is compressed. With that in place, what we'll do is connect the water line. Your water line may vary. Uh, for this house, I'm using a 12 inch long, uh, 7 8 inch fill valve to the toilet and 3 8 inch to compression valve for down here at the bottom. Just make sure that you get the right size fitting for the top and the bottom. Okay, once everything is connected, the water line, you turn the water line on, which I just did before, and then you're supposed to flush a few times just to make sure. And check for leaks. And so I've checked underneath here for each of the three contact points. I've checked here, and I've checked here with the compression fit and no leaks. And then once that's in place, you can put the lid on, and then we'll attach the seat. Okay, one of the last steps will be installing the seat into the two holes there. Just have a Kohler seat to match. So we're going to put the screws through the back, line the holes, and then underneath we'll have these to screw them in and lock them in place. I'll run a bead of caulk around here just to seal up that with the floor. This is the caulk I'm going to use, just a silicone clear. Run a bead around the outside edge of the toilet and afterwards wipe it with your gloved finger or a paper towel and then you can let it dry. All right, and that's it with the seat in. Just test the clothes. Make sure that your caps are closed and that everything is lined up. And I think you're done. And that should be it. It's a pain in the butt, but save yourself a lot of money if you do it yourself.